So we released the HC20 a couple months ago, um, and it's, a, it's our 20 kilogram collaborative robot. And we're really excited about this launch, but one of the unique uh, applications that we've seen that's become quite popular for it is palletizing. So due to the reach of it, so 1.7 meters of reach, we've seen a huge increase in, uh, in people wanting to use this for palletizing. So today we're going to go over that. Um, so first we're going to talk about why collaborative palletizing, why is this of interest? Uh, what are the advantages of the HC20 for palletizing? We're going to walk through some of the products available, um, and that includes what's available now and what will soon be available. And then we're actually going to see this in action using our uh, collaborative palletizing demo that we built that uh, you'll be able to, to see virtually. Um, it was made for a trade show, but this is our virtual trade show, show, so you get to see it in action before anybody else. So we'll be taking a walk out to our lab, and you can see that in person. Why collaborative palletizing? So end-of-line palletizing is one of the best places to implement robotic, robotic automation. So by this time, your products are all pack, packaged into either the primary packaging or secondary packaging, maybe a master case, and you're putting on these, you're putting the boxes on a pallet for shipping. So they're all uniform boxes coming down, usually a conveyor belt. And uh, right now you might have a couple guys that are out there taking all the boxes off of your infeed conveyor and stacking them onto a pallet. Well, this is very repetitive motion for them. So it's constantly twisting and turning from the back. Uh, and it's a very boring job because they're just taking the same boxes and stacking them over and over all, all day long, possibly. Um, so maybe you have one or two people, sometimes more than that, doing this packaging for you. And what we can do is put in one robot that will just take all the boxes from that conveyor and stack them on the pallet for you. So uh, very easy to implement. Um, often you don't need a, with a pallet or with a collaborative robot, you don't need those big safety fences. You still have to have a risk assessment, of course, but there's a possibility you can get away from having these big safety fences. And if you need the additional um, productivity, you can speed the robot up using a speed and separation monitoring, which we'll go over next. So it's also very so compact because you don't need all that traditional fencing. Um, it's also very safe because the robot can operate in PFL mode, uh, at least the HC series that we have can, including the HC20. So if it touches you while it's in motion, the robot will stop and then wait for the all clear signal to be to resume operation. It's also very flexible. So since we're not we don't have this big cell um, with the fencing around it we can potentially move this to each point, um, maybe to different conveyors. That way we can uh, remain flexible. We don't have to deploy multiple robots. There's a potential that we can use one robot to handle many different conveyors just by moving it around. So just, real, just a, uh, a refresher on our collaborative modes. So the first one is going to be stop state monitoring. So this is a binary start and stop usually enabled by light curtains uh, that will stop an industrial robot um, from motion. So it puts it into a safety monitored stop as a person approaches. So that's technically a collaborative mode. Another one that can be used on industrial robots or collaborative robots is speed and separation monitoring. So this uses a laser scanner to detect as a per person approaches the robot, and then it can slow it down and stop it according to a risk assessment. So with an industrial robot, the robot's going to stop completely. But with a collaborative robot, the robot will go into collaborative mode and slow down to about 250 millimeters per second um, in full collaborative mode so that a person can get up next to the robot, work with it, not worry about getting injured by it. But then when they back away, the robot can continue operating at full speed. Um, so the modes of collaboration enabled by a PFL robot, like our HC series, so the HC10DT and the HC20XP, are power and force limiting. So this uses sensors internal to the robot to monitor for external forces. So let's say the robot's operating and it touches you, the robot will stop once that force exceeds a certain threshold, making sure you're safe, but then it pauses until you can give it the all clear signal to resume operation. 
And then the final mode of collaboration is going to be hand guiding. So this is a very quick and easy way to program a human collaborative robot using those internal sensors. So you can just position it where you want it to go, teach point one, position it to the second point, teach point two. You can even toggle your tool on and off and log that into your program. So you can set up a job quickly and easily without even touching the robot pendant. So continuing on here, so some of the advantages the HC20 XP has <clears throat> are, and let me get to the right slide here, there we go. So it has a 20 kilogram lift capacity. So that allows the robot to lift uh, larger cases and part sizes than 10 kilogram robots. So perhaps you have some full cases, the robot has no problem lifting those and it can operate with a variety of different part sizes. So it allows for potentially greater throughput in, pal in palletizing because you can also potentially pick more cases at a time um, than a, a 10 kilogram robot. So the 1.7 meters of reach on it outreaches both the HC-10DT and competing 10 kilogram collaborative robots. So it has much longer reach and that allows it to be uh, to reach the outer extremes of a 40 by 48 by 80 inch tall pallet without a tool extension. Um, <clears throat> and that tool extension could potentially lower your payload due to the increased moment and inertia that that would bring on. So that also allows you greater flexibility in work cell design because you don't have to worry about the tool extension and then um, moving the robot to, to the proper position. So the uh, extended reach also allows for elimination of elevator in many collaborative palletizing applications. So usually with a 10 kilogram robot, you have to have some kind of lift mechanism to enable it to reach that 80 inch tall pallet size. And the, the uh, elevator will add complexity. It also uh, slows down productivity because you can't move the robot when the elevator is in motion. So the IP67 rating of our AC20 XP makes the robot well suited for non high pressure spray down applications. So if you need to clean up your pallet area, you can actually hose down the robot without any kind of issues. And it also makes it uh, perfect for machine tending where cutting fluid or other uh, materials may, uh, may lead to contamination of the robot or getting on the robot. So it makes it impervious to uh, water based coolants. Um, also has standard food grade grease throughout and that uh, that's it package secondary food or secondarily secondary packaged foods so maybe you have some boxed foods that you need to package um, where you may have some contamination uh, worries so with food grade grease you don't have to worry about that um, also things like children's toys very safe to use in that environment so uh, perfect for those and it also gives you your choice of hand guided or pendant based teaching um, allowing you to set up a, a robot program very quickly and easily and giving uh, some additional flexibility and programming style there. So just for an example here, we have a traditional um, palletizing cell with a 10 kilogram collaborative robot. And as you can see, there's a, we have the elevator involved and that adds quite a bit of complexity and cost in your, uh, in your cell. So by eliminating the elevator, we're eliminating cost, we're increasing safety, and uh, just makes things better overall. So on the right hand side here, we have our HC20 XP. So in this uh, example, we have it on a 48 inch riser, but you could have it on a 54 inch riser too. And that allows you to re reach the extents of a standard pallet um, on two sides. So we can do two full pallets without having to move the robot. So that also increases your productivity time because you don't have to wait for the uh, elevator to traverse um, when you're doing your, doing your job. So a uh, much faster um, way to do it. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I am out here with our HC20 XP palletizing demo. So this is a trade show demo we built. We have the robot on a 48 inch riser. Uh, this could be a 54 inch riser. However, uh, we wanted to make it transportable. So making it a little bit shorter uh, makes it easier for us to move around. So the robot is using its 1700 millimeters of reach to reach two pallets on this riser. So these are standard 40 by 48 inch pallets. And we're going from zero to 80 inches tall here. 
So uh, and this is like the full height of a pallet just from one riser. We don't need an elevator, and that cuts down on our uh, integration costs and also speeds things up, makes it a lot safer because we don't have to worry about that elevator. So we are using um, some of the modes of collaboration with this. We have it hooked up for speed and separation monitoring enabled by the two zone scanners, and you can see one right over there. So right now, I am in the robot, robot's work zone. So the robot is slowed down, and we do have that light on the top there, the green light, signifying that the robot is in collaborative mode. As I back out of this zone, the robot will shift into industrial mode and go full speed to maintain productivity. So when nobody's around, the robot can operate very quickly, and that is not in collaborative mode because that green light is not on, telling us that it is. So as the robot operates, I can walk back into this zone. The robot slows down, and I can continue approaching the robot, and it slows down considerably, allowing me to approach it, get in there, move boxes around, anything that I need to do. So we'll let it get down a little bit further here. So since the screen light's on, I can actually interact with the robot. If I'm in this zone and it touches me, the robot will stop. And there's a amber light that comes on here. It's a button. Once I give it the all clear signal by hitting this button, the robot can continue operation right where it left off. So I'll back out again and let it continue on. So for this application, we're using an on-robot VG10 gripper. So this gripper has a vacuum pump integrated inside of it that's electrically driven. So we don't have to have any external air lines or vacuum hoses for that gripper to work. It's all using the internal wiring to the HC20XP robot. That makes it a much more, a much more streamlined installation, and we don't have any other peripheral equipment hooked up to this. So yeah, very, very handy demo. <coughs> Uh, the HC20XP also includes food grade grease uh, throughout all its axes. So you can use this in areas where incidental food contact may occur. So maybe you're doing some secondary packaging of foods, so it can do that no problem at all, or children's toys, uh, anywhere where, gr where contact may occur of the uh, robot grease or anything like that. So it keeps it nice and clean. Also, the robot is fully IP67 rated. So for wipe down or cleaning, uh, it's very easy to do. You could actually hose this robot down with a garden hose and it wouldn't hurt it. So uh, very, it opens up the door for a lot of applications. The robot's also completely impervious to uh, water-based coolants for machine tending. So very good for that too. So I'm gonna back out of the way here. We can ro watch the robot operate a little bit more. So right now we just have it reaching the two pallets. But you could imagine we, in a real life application, we would have at least one in-feed conveyor coming in, feeding the robot these boxes, and then it could palletize accordingly. All right, now I'll walk in one more time, get the robot to slow down. So I hope you enjoyed this demo, the HC20. Uh, XP robot. This is not something we have.